Project Colossus. Your failure has destroyed my experiment, my career, my future. But you will not take my life with you as you sink into the magma abyss of the smelting pool. No. I shall weave my very being into the fabric of your madness. To preserve myself, I will destroy myself. I no longer have a name. I am only Explorer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist here with a review of the Fans Project Crossfire 02A Explorer. He's an unmanned shuttle drone. That's why there's no windows. I think some people didn't know that yet, so I just wanted to say it again. And I kind of like how he looks. He's a little bit long uh, compared to a lot of other scouts, and it gives him a bit of an extra sense of size when compared to something like, say, a nondescript blue helicopter. So, I'm happy with the vehicle mode overall. Uh, the wings are a little bit thin, but after the Defender's sword, I've come to the realization that thinking something on a Fans Project toy is thin and could break actually tends to mean it's just really dense, durable plastic. I guess the only real qualm I might have with the vehicle mode is that there's no landing gear of any kind, so when you put him on a table, he's just kind of chilling out on a table. Not that bad, though. The point has been made that this guy doesn't look quite as heavily armed as the other Combaticons look when you give them the accessories that he comes with, but uh, I've been messing around and uh, I think that if you use his fist holes under the nose cone, you can at least kind of make him a little bit more armed by having him become an unmanned shuttle that has an enormous gun strapped to the bottom of its cockpit. Uh, I mean, uh, lack of cockpit. So that's an option. Uh, both guns should be able to fit in there, although that one I think looks a little bit better than this one with its uh, you know, huge grenade launcher uh, thing on the front. You can fold this down if you want, but uh, it doesn't really give me the same good feelings that the, uh, I guess, plasma rifle uh, give. Also, it's kind of angled down like this, which is unfortunate, but this is how you can make your unmanned shuttle drone heavily armed. You can even stick the enormous onslaught cannon onto his vehicle mode, although that's really more so out of defiance than practicality. Uh, but hey, you know, you can always tilt it back so that he's shooting at stuff behind him and to the left. Uh, or, I guess, to the, to, the, to the right. Or, anyway. And if you're really careful, you can even just balance the missile launchers on his wings, and then if you... Or, or not, or not. So we figured out ways to use these, to use this on a technicality, and to utterly BS my way through using these in the vehicle mode as well. Just to finish it off, you can also do a shuttle on a shoe! Yeah! Okay, I'll transform him. The tail fin has to be removed. An unfortunate piece of parts forming that is the only major blemish on an otherwise delightful conversion process, though some of the more finicky components may give pause to more cautious collectors. Joints are tight, but some steps may be confusing to execute at first. The rear gray flaps that form the lower back are a creative and excellent idea that may not be obvious to perform on your first attempt. A horizontal swivel joint and rotating panel make for a remarkable arm reveal, whose complexities quickly become intuitive. The concept of an extremely simple Scramble City limb transformation has been embellished with a few starkly unique touches that craft a very basic robot mode through highly intelligent and precise design and engineering. Crisp and clean is the best way to explain this sculpt and paint job. The head has qualities that I really adore, all mushed together into one lovely robot head. Namely, it's got lots of really sharp, really blocky edges, and a ton of personality carried right inside his eyes. That's exactly what I want out of a Transformer head sculpt, and this guy has it in spades! It also helps that he's got quite a clean color scheme overall, and a lot of sculpted detail, very few flat spaces. Which is kind of a callback to the main Transformers line, especially in Energon, where almost nobody was flat. There was always techie detail all over the place. 
Well, in Energon, in Cybertron, in Armada, uh, Transformers in general. The Explorer is buttloaded with posability, all things considered, for his size. His head's on a glorious ball joint. He can look everywhere. He can emote anything. He's got shoulders that go just where they need to. And what's nice is they're not too hindered by these side panels because they rotate fairly freely. So you can just put them where they need to be. He's actually got a double jointed elbow. It's on a ball joint on the bottom. And then on the top, it's on a hinge. So it's a bicep swivel. It's a double jointed arm. It lets you do more poses than one might expect out of a guy this size. Although sadly, there is no wrist swivel. I kind of wish there was one. On the bright side, he does have a ratcheting joint in his waist, and that is really solid. I am pleased with that. That was a pleasant surprise. Uh, the ball-jointed hips and thigh swivels are, you know, come as you go. They do what they need to. He's got a really decent knee joint. It's not double-jointed, but there's enough clearance for it to do more or less whatever you want it to. Uh, there aren't too many clearance issues either with his pelvis. I mean, these plates don't move anywhere, but everything's been placed, so it looks good standing still, but still has a full range of motion. His ankles, again, lovely ball-jointed ankles. They can go all over the place, and they can tilt, baby. They can tilt. Uh, the only problem is this guy's uh, shins are sculpted a little bit low. Uh, if he's standing still, it's very easy for his feet to not actually clear uh, the entire lower part of these gray components. So he's more so balancing on those than on his actual boots. But minor, minor complaint. He is still standing after all, and that's what's important. There is a little bit of a problem with his backpack. It's not like it gets in the way or anything, but I wish it clipped in somewhere. It kind of just chills out there, and if you're messing around with him, it's really easy for it to end up, you know, like that. So, uh, I wish there was a clip or a lock or something on the nose cone. Just another minor quibble, and I do mean minor compared to a lot of the positives this guy has. He's a very solid piece of robot kit. And the upside of my minor quibble with the transformation is that the part you removed forms a really cool axe. This thing is like a just a death hatchet, and it really fits his look. It's not the first weapon I would have thought to give to a guy who's basically a rocket ship, but man, does this thing work for his aesthetics. He can dual wield it, he can wave it around like he is total master of the blade. Even though it parts forms during the transformation, the payoff is pretty damn solid. Though I do rather wish this thing had some place to store on his body when he's not holding it in robot mode. At least you can unfold it so you can give him, like, a sword. And he can get all like, this may be a knife for a bigger robot, but for me, I will go Hassan Chop! Clearly this guy is pretty cool on his own, but can you take advantage of the other accessories if you're just messing with him by himself? Yes, you can. Most obviously, he can use either of the guns that he comes with, be it the plasma rifle or the grenade launcher. They peg in place very simply, and are an easy additional armament for the Explorer. Hell, he can even dual-wield them! Or you can plug them together if you want him to carry around a shotgun that's about the same size as his body. Don't want to know about the recoil on that one, though. That could be pretty harsh. Though, if we're going to talk about guns that are far too large, I just like that the peg holes in his fists can actually hang on to this thing. And hey, I bet if we balance these things on here just... Just right, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Shoulder launcher mode. And then you can turn him around to. to oh, well. Um, on the bright side, he can totally kind of rock this giant shoe like an enormous skateboard. Don't even try to tell me that isn't awesome. It's. Well, it actually took a while to balance, but. That aside! How marvelous is this guy on his own, eh? Unfortunately, he's, while excellent, kind of expensive at around 55 bucks for a dude that's about the size of a basic. He is an amazing basic, though. The sculpt, the paint, the posability. This guy is high marks all around. And if you're willing to stretch your imagination a bit, you can really get your money's worth out of this guy by himself if you use the, the hoverboard or the shuttle shoe, if you use the, uh, the useless balance blocks. Uh, if you give him an enormous cannon, and most importantly, if you use the guns that are really nicely designed for him. These accessories, just with Explorer, can actually very much enhance your value. And I think that it's really worth taking a look at this guy 
if you have an even passing interest in this set. Granted, most of you guys are not going to buy this guy all by himself just for Explorer, but I can assure you that when he stands alone, he really carries himself well. And if you do want to get this guy just for the sake of having a cool rocket ship Decepticon, you will not be getting a bad toy. You will be getting a pretty damn cool scientist with an axe. And really, isn't that what we all want at the end of the day? This has been Internet Personality Evangelists, and the crossfire has only just begun.